Hello learners, welcome to Trick Science. Now we covered Avatar The Last Airbender once in the past with an episode all about how to produce them precious flames. Wow, this was a hot episode. But today we're going in a different direction with the most maneuverable element of them all, air. Wouldn't this be such an awesome element to have? I mean, you'd be able to fly or glide at the very least, move around really fast, shoot giant gusts from your hands in an epic Kami Kami Ha style, and general day to day movements would be a lot easier. So how do airbenders go about airbending? What biological mechanisms are happening underneath the hood, so to speak? In discovering this, let's first take a look at how wind is created on our own planet. With the sun's rays hitting the earth, heating both it and its surrounding air up, it creates areas of differing air pressure. This is due to the fact that as air heats up, its atoms and molecules move faster and expand, or spread outwards causing the air to be less dense and rise upwards. The rising of this warmer, less dense air creates an area of low pressure. Inversely, the molecules in colder air move much more slowly, and being closer together are much more dense, causing the air to sink, thus creating an area of higher pressure. Now what happens for wind to be created is a natural phenomenon called diffusion. If you've ever wondered why everyone can smell that morning bacon you're cooking or that heavy perfume you sprayed, it's because particles have a tendency to spread out or even out within a space. They kinda just move around and mix. Since the sun hits different areas of the earth at different angles, with areas like the equator being directly hit and therefore heated up a lot more, and since the earth's surface is comprised of different materials that heat up differently, with the land heating and cooling much faster than the water, a lot of different areas of air pressure are created all over the planet. In the case of air, the cold, more dense air will diffuse from its area of higher pressure to equalize the area of lower pressure created by the warmer air. With the greater the pressure difference between the two areas, the faster the air or wind will move to equal things out. So how does the concept of differing pressures and diffusion relate to airbending? Are airbenders simply just manipulating the air pressure to shoot a wave of wind or catapult themselves 50 feet into the air? Well, yes and no. Remember Remember how I said the greater the pressure between the two areas of air, the faster the air will move? Well, turns out this is all due to temperature differences. The hotter the air, the lower the air pressure will be, and vice versa, the colder the air, the greater the air pressure will be. And thus it's due to a greater temperature difference that air will either move slower or faster as it diffuses outwards to equalize its surrounding area. So rather than just being able to move the air particles around just because, you know, fantasy. What if, in order to bend air, airbenders are actually cooling and heating the air around them? Seriously, whenever we see Aang shoot a stream of air at someone, he's actually super cooling the air, squashing the particles together and making it much heavier, which he then shoots or releases outwards. If he's jumping, he's warming up the air at the bottom of his feet in a large burst, and possibly for running as well, if he's not also heating the air in front of him, while he's cooling it behind him at the same time. And if he's using his glider, he's just heating up the air beneath him to create an updraft. Let's explore the difference between an airbending master and novice for a minute, shall we? We know that masters usually are able to summon up way more of their respective element and use it in a much more creative and sometimes devastating way. So why is that? Well, one possible explanation could be that airbending masters are able to change the temperature of a larger amount amount of air particles at once, like whenever they decide to make a tornado. And they're also able to cause a greater temperature change in the particles themselves. This could explain one reason behind why they live at such high elevations. The air at higher elevations is much less dense, and with less particles being present in it, it would be quite a lot easier to practice with and master for any airbending training. Admittedly, a possible hole in this theory is that airbenders couldn't direct the air in the direction of their choosing, as the now cooler air would just diffuse outwards to equalize the entire surrounding area, and not in just one direction. But I have a simple explanation for this one too. While the airbenders are cooling down the air between their hands, they're also warming up the air 
fire in the direction they shoot it. Yes, they certainly are masters of heating and cooling. Heck, instead of airbenders, let's just call them temperature benders, am I right? Anyways, that's just some science. Trick science! See you learners on the flip side.